Hello and welcome. It is Kristen from Life of Crafting and I'm going to be starting a new series. This is Paper Rose Cozy Christmas and I believe this was from the 2020 season. So I love, love the colors in this. You're looking at like a traditional pattern, but not traditional colors. This is my first time working with the paper. It's kind of got a finished feeling to it. It is and it's, gloss. it's not as glossy. Um, we got a little bit of an ombre feeling for the back, so that would be a nice like wintery night scene. And two papers with these cut aparts. They're a little bit smaller, but you know what? I'm thinking I'm gonna probably put a couple of them on a sheet together. So that is paper one. Then paper two is this kind of like dusty mauve color. Mauve kind of dusty anyway, but then the back has these cut parts. I'll do it this way so we can see it at the same time. Um, some, some cut parts, some really cute little effects on there. Um, this is my first working with this paper pad, so do see doing some cute stuff with that. And this has like a pine bell kind of like a grayish silver and then the back has a two-tone it's kind of different I've never done that so uh, I don't know to cut that in half I don't know then you've got this one with the four panels and then this one has like an all over effect like Christmas looks like postmarks from like what they do at the when they stamp at the post office um, so that's kind of something different. This really light, almost tone on tone stripe. It's almost like a champagne color striping on there. And then the back is these cut parts. Um, yeah, kind of cute. Some of them like that. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Um, the Swiss chocolate pretzels? I have no idea. And then the last set of stuff is this really nice polka dot tone on tone kind of ombre. And then the back has some striping and these looks like Christmas cookies. So what I'm thinking is this would be kind of a cool card front to back up for the cut kind of parts. Um I would not do more than one page of cut aparts, truthfully. Um, this one, uh, that's not a that's not a bad one. Um, I do like this one. I do like this one. Definitely like these two. So I don't know that I want to do them all. Um, the back is a stripe, so I can definitely fit that in on some different things. So I'm going to go pull together some things, some different, um, whatchamacallit, some, some stamp sets I think I want to use because I think that's going to be my inspiration. I'm definitely feeling like this is going to need um, some different textures layered in with it. I don't think that I'm going to just use papers here. I feel like it needs some doilies or something um like twines to mix in so i'm gonna find some card stocks and i'll be right back all right here's what i've got going so far um i've decided that the main color for this needs to be this craft paper i have it just really seemed to mute this paper down um keep it cohesive without it being the white um white just did not do it for me with this collection so I started with this paper that had that, and I, I started with that because, like I said, that was like a half a sheet. I forget which one it was, but it was a half a sheet, and I got my three car fronts here. Um, but when I did that, I said, you know, let me pick the three out of the sheet that I liked the most of the cut aparts, and I really liked these two, and I liked this one, but I really didn't like, the back was too much black for what I was going for. So I wound up taking those and I fussy cut them out. 
God, I always have so much going on here. And I wound up putting them on another one. So I've got my three that I happen to be using for other cut apart sheets. Now I'm going with a ivory color car base for these three. Um, again, because of they're not being white in here and the craft, I felt like it lended itself more to the ivory than the white. So this I pulled out. This is Stamping Up's uh, Blackberry Bliss color stock. I'm trying to use up, like I said, what I have. So that was what I started with was this one. And I wound up, like I said, I didn't like everything on this because it felt so busy and I wanted I already made up my mind I wanted them kind of skewed to the side so what I liked when I did this I said you know that looks nice but it needed something and then I remembered I knew I had doilies I had these natural color ones from recollections I don't know if they call them natural there's so I don't see anything on here but they are like kind of like a craft color so this one having the, the cocoa and the cookies really seemed like it was calling to me um and i did the the craft in a full card front size so that i didn't have a lot of reveal of any so there shouldn't be really any reveal here so i felt like it just needed something else so i took this i cut it in half and then i'm just going to um, bunch it up a little bit and i'm going to put them so that they have a covering in the two corners and then I'm going to just put some foam squares behind my warm wishes here I debated if I'm going to do a bow or anything like that I don't think I am there's this for my so I think I'm going to just call this one done once I stick this on there. Then the other two, the, the doily just didn't seem like it made as much sense to me. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, they just didn't fit in with the theme I was kind of looking for. So then I'm... Uh, doing the same background but what I'm thinking with them is they need something to balance it off this has the sentiment with it and it also has the I get that on there very good it also has the cocoa scene All right, I'll do that later so I felt like this one has some of that but doesn't really do that so I think what I'm going to do for these ones is I'm going to go find myself a strip of ribbon and call and put that strip of ribbon down and then this on the top. And then I may do a little bit of a bow with some kind of a twine. And I have some of them like little trinkety kind of looking things. So I'm gonna go dig some of them out and I will be back. So yes, my work table is a hot mess, but here's what I came up with. I started getting out and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use up some of this gold twine. I am going to make this almost like a tag for the front. So what I did was I just measured down half inch, half inch cut, and then I had to piece in some more paper because of me putting out, having put it on already. And I'm just going to put a hole in the top of this thing and feed myself some twine through it and make this a, um, a little tag. I thought, you know what, why not make the card look like a present? So here's what we're going to do. I just went back and forth with that a couple times. Now I've got myself a loop here. Because I went around the card four times, and I'll show you how I decided to do that. So now I just have myself a little tag for the front, and I will put some foam tape on that. 
And again, I'm not needing to do too much, but I put one piece of red line down and used it to hold the first layer, which was the ones that went this way. And then I took the red line tape off, the backing off of it, and used it to go around this way. And uh, yeah, now I need to put this on a card front. Hold on. Oh, that's what my desk is a hot mess right now. But uh, where is my bone folder? Yeah, you think I have these ready already. So now, this is definitely gonna need a lot of, this is gonna need a lot of glue to keep this down with all of these layers of, this was a gold metallic twine that Stampin' Up! had out um, in 2019, 2020 in their Forever Fern um, suite. And, of course, I had to buy more of it at the end of the season before it went out of stock because, you know, I can't be without it. But any kind of like gold twine, I think silver, I got my next card, I think I'm going to go with silver. So I'm going to just snip this off. So again, I had loops in there. I don't care. I'm going to put that on the top and call that one a day. So now I have this one and I have that one. So then I think this one is going in the same direction, but I think instead of that, I have some shimmer trim, it's called, from close to my heart. I think I'm going to put some of that down with this, but this one's going to need a sentiment, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me, oh, as I ripped my glasses off my face, isn't that great? did have some of the trinkets. Um, I'm not sure. We'll see what I'm going to do with this one. Right, we're back with this one. And I did use the shimmer trim from Close to My Heart. I don't even know if they make this anymore. Bought this at one of my uh, crafting days. So I just put that across the front. Honestly, you could use a really thin piece of silver glitter. I'm going to... I haven't decided if I'm putting that down, but what I am doing is I, I have these... I did a lot of crafts that were um, like applique felt, and I had a bunch of these like star look, star shaped sequins. I think you can still buy some at the like craft stores. Um, so I'm deciding to doctor up my card front because I felt like it needed a little something else, a little something something to match the bling in the back. So I'm going to stick just one of those stars on the top of the tree. And then, honestly, I think this came off of a sweater or some piece of garment I had where they give you the extra little bags. I don't even know where I got these. There are these flat little sequins. There's like, um, I don't have a regular sequin nearby. Most sequins kind of have like a cup to them. These are flat, so these are going to be perfect. I'm going to just randomly put, I've got white in here and gold, and I think I'm going to just put them randomly on this tree in some pattern, just to give it a little, like I said, a little something something, um, because I feel like this card has, it's got a very cute scene, but I feel like it just is kind of flat. Um, so the trick is here, because I only have two colors, is I kind of have to space them out. So I think that'll be, uh, that'll be good enough. And then I've got to figure out the sentiment. And I got a little bit of an idea what I want to do with that. So I will be back. Okay, I, I have this ready to go. And I didn't realize, I want this little one here that says cheers. And I want to put it here on the wall and make it look like it's like a picture on the wall to finish this off. But you know what? It's right dead center in this page. I'm going to plan this page out so I can get that one, but I don't want to do it yet. So this particular one is going to go aside until I get that one. So now we have that one that's done, that one, and this one. Again, these are going to be my simple 
cars. So there's going to be some that are a little bit more involved than others. We'll see. I will admit this is throwing me off. I don't care for having this many choices to make in the paper. Um, so I'm probably going to focus on this page. So having said that, um, this page, the first thing that's coming and jumping out to me for some reason is the snowman. And I really have a cute die. Um, it is called Jack Frost from Elizabeth Designs. And I got some accessories that go with that, as well as the top hat. I like his top hat on there. So I think we're gonna put a couple of these together and let's see what we can do with this die and having this as our background paper. Now, again, this paper is just off from too many selections in addition to all the other selections I have. So I don't think I'm going to use the um, that side at all. So I'm going to use both sheets up with this die. So let me cut out these pieces. Oh, here was the, the picture from the front. That's one of them kind of like build a, you know, build a snowman kind of thing. But with this paper being muted in the grays, he's got to be kind of, you know, aged up some. So let's, let's work with the Elizabeth design Jack Frost. So let me cut out some stuff and see what kind of fun we can have here. I'm back with the second card I'm going to make in this um, Paper Roses Cozy Christmas series. And I just did another video on um, how I decided, how I deciphered. I had this sketch I found on Pinterest, and it's some, I, I don't even recognize, some kind of like, looks like German to me, maybe. It's a lot of hodgepodge stuff, I understand. But um, the final of this got to be that it's a five and a half card by um, four and a quarter is the, is the, the size of the card going uh, horizontal. Then I did the layer at four by five and a quarter inch is the brown layer. Then I did my stripe paper at two and a quarter inch by, um, I actually did that by five and a quarter inch so that I, or actually five and an eighth inch um, because, um, I wanted it to come out to be the, um, a little bit of the reveal. So I pieced in what was left down to the bottom here. So as you can see, I had, I had plenty of room at the bottom and then the strip wound up being, um, this part here I did in one and a quarter inch I'm trying to write and this is not easy and I did that by the um I have a layer under there so I did the the layer the brown layer underneath an eighth of an inch bigger but I did this the same I did this the five and the um one eighth inch and then the layers are are um maybe I should show that first I took this cut apart sheet that has 25 and I cut it up and then after I had them all cut up I laid them out and what I did was I took half to what I considered to be dark colors which were like this 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 and then I put half in what I considered light and half what I considered dark so then the two that really stuck out to me was that um, I wasn't wanting to do anything with this purple that was the one I opted that I'm not doing with so for me, the only ones I had purple left were these three. Um, and I wound up just pairing these two up right off the bat because I didn't know what else um, with these. And this was a dark and I needed it in the dark pile at the time when I started breaking this stuff up. So then my ideology beyond that was like, so these two started together. Um, these just looked cozy to me. Having tea with a cat. Um... I tried to do something that so there wasn't like a sweet and a sweet so I broke them up so it's a tree and a, and a sweet um, so some of them like you know this is Marion Bright I, I didn't I, I had to find a home 
for the polka dot down here. So I'm not putting a sediment with 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 that because I need to. I'm gonna. The only thing I can do on that is print a sediment or put something else decorative on it, and I'm not really gonna be able to match up these graphics. So that one was left to be a graphic. So this had to be um, something else. So this is what I felt. Um, that's a little sketchy. I don't know if people are going to kind of figure that being Christmas. So I figure that'll be a good one to put my own sentiment on. Um, home sweet home. Bunch of sweets. Figured they kind of went together. So if I went really dark, I went with something light. It's kind of how I'm trying to lay this out. So I'm going to wind up getting a total of 12 of these cards. And again, here's another like sweets and I put it with something else. I tried not to keep anything like together. So I wasn't going to have like two pinks, um, but that I wanted them to be complimentary. So then I also, after having done that, I cut my pieces out and I had what I showed you here um, is how the card layout came out. So I opted to um, cut these pictures down so that the, the graphic part here is two and an eighth. They were two and a quarter. And you have to make sure you take a little bit off of every side so it stays centered for your graphics on these. So the, I opted to go with the craft paper, keeping it kind of in that monochromatic. I was going to do colored layers and maybe make it pop. But honestly... It was difficult to find one color that would match for both um, papers because like what may have worked for this pinkish probably wouldn't work for this black background. So I figured keep it monochromatic and um, they'll just craft to me is, is just a neutral color. So I figured that would work. These are going to be glued down in this, but um, what I'm opting to do before I glue these down is I found this sentiment. It's called Celebrate the Season. I thought that was really great because all these pictures have all these different scenes on it from the Christmas season. So I have this lovely stamp apparatus from Stamping Up. Sooner or later, I'm probably going to get myself a Misty. But um, usually when you use the Apollo, um, I can't even think, these clear stamps, that you need this um, foam underneath of it. But because my card is already put together and there's so many layers, I'm going to see if I can get this to work without. So I want to get it centered this way. But because I've never used this and I don't know if I'm getting it down, I want to get this on my board first. Or whatever you want to call this clear piece. And then I'm going to just take this out and stick myself a piece of scrap paper in there. I'm telling you, I have a whole bag here. All it is is all these white pieces that I cut off of stuff. Um, they're not really that big, and you probably think I'd be crazy for keeping them, but I keep them just for these reasons. When I don't, because I don't want to stamp right on there. I know a lot of people show their videos, and they're like right away like stamping on there and how great and fabulous it looks. Um, I don't trust that I'm ever going to get anything right even the fifth time <laughs> forget the first time i'm never gonna get it right the first time i know that um i'm gonna use some early espresso from stamping up and i what i'm looking for right now and this is not gonna work um because i don't have that layer under there i'm getting some of it as you can see um but i'm just looking to make sure like i said that it reads and it's straight across and, you know, that came out, I got it on there pretty straight, in my opinion. So knowing that, I feel like I'm confident to do that. But I'm also looking at, like, I, now looking at that, I don't, I don't want that color on my paper. So I'm kind of happy. I tried it with a scrap, so I'm going to keep trying this um, with a different ink. I have a Gina K Warm Cocoa. First thing is, let me clean this that off. Um, you know, I really think like, do I edit this stuff out? But you know, I feel like I'm, I'm bringing to you what's, the, you know, and I'm sorry if it's, if it's a nuisance. I just feel like I'm bringing to you the, the real life of crafting, um, that you're not going to get this right the first time and really how you should be preparing yourself to, um, to get those better prints. 
um, and to get them right, because you're, you know, the chances of getting it right the first time, like I said, are never really that successful. Um, that's why I do a lot of concept cards in my first um, try or two. I want to make sure I don't have a lot of water still in that stamp. It feels pretty dry. Um, like I said, I really like the Gina K ink. I look at how much ink got on this board from the stamping up and how much I got on here from the Gina K and I got like nothing of overage on there. I'm talking about all the stuff that gets on the side. Um, I'm talking about like on this side panel. There is like nothing on there. And if you had seen what was on there before from the stamping up, oh my God. So I, I really, really am in love with um, the Gina K ink. And now what I'm looking at is that color is one that to me is definitely more complimentary. So again, I'm looking on this scrap. This is gonna go in the trash now. Oh wait, there was two of them there. Look at that. Yeah, well they're both gonna go in the trash now. But that's all I'm looking for is, um, you know, I use the scraps just for that purpose. Did I get my stamp on straight? Yes, I got it on straight when I was centering it here, but there's a lot of lettering on that. So to try and make sure that, you know, you're gonna get it centered, is another uh you know another battle so i'll stamp this out and then i'll finish this card off um you know all you missed in here really was me uh, oh maybe i'm gonna need the maybe i'm gonna need something behind there we'll see yeah i'm just not getting that c out of there and that's the thing with with this is this those magnets getting there all the time but I think they came out pretty good. So for this card, I'm pretty well um, almost done. I'm gonna finish off the other 11 off screen, but I will finish, let me put a paper towel in there just to make sure I don't get that ink transferring over on anything. Um, I was debating like a banner or something like that for the sentiment. I was like, you know what, it just, was hiding too much um because i really wanted these to show through so i'm really kind of happy i'm not going to do the banner i'll save that as a scrap to um because i had to put some scraps behind here to make sure they're all level and then i'm really thinking that this just for a little bit of a something something i think i'm going to just put um i may just put like two little um I may take some like pearls and then take like a, a dark brown Sharpie and, and do them. I don't know yet. I just, it feels like this card just needs a little bit of embellishment just to finish it off. And then this card will be done. Um, really kind of liked the layout and how this is gonna let me highlight all these cut aparts because there are a lot of really cute designs in there. Um, so this is good because, you know, I am using new papers in this because I did cut down um, a 6 by 12 to make this, and this was just a scrap. But I'm going to use up a whole sheet of this, and if I really wanted to, I could do another whole sheet. And I would be able to get not just the 24, I would get 25 cards if I wanted to. And you know what, I'm opting to just um, leave that for right now. Let's see how this comes out. If I'm really liking it and it goes easy, I can change it, but I will be running short of the striped paper. So I would have to find another sheet of something else. And I don't think I have anything that's that neutral. So let me finish these and I'll be back. Hello, I'm back. Finished my cards with the cut aparts and they're upstairs. My hubby and my son are away for the weekend. So I'm spreading out through the whole house. So I finished them and I'm on for another, and I'll tell you where I kind of started with this card here. And it's not done, I'm thinking I need a sentiment. Um, honestly, I don't know. We'll see if I finish off. I'm looking at a couple things on this. It's not done, it's still under the, the concept section here. But I had this card sketch from Queen and Company that I've wanted to try. And after getting it started, I realized I don't have foundation set number seven. Um, that's apparently the only one I don't have. So anyway, we called this for inspiration because 
I don't have anything to do that exactly. So I also had this die set from Elizabeth Designs for this um, hot chocolate. I had seen Tina Smith's video where she made this on um, her channel. I think it's called like Cards and Coffee Time or something to that nature. And I really um, liked it and wanted to give it a try. And uh, I don't know if my camera's moving. I feel like it is. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I wanted to give it a try and I thought, you know, I wanted to do something a little different with this paper. This paper kind of looked to me like a blustery, um, like snowy day where you got snow and, and all kinds of things blowing around. Um, they're evergreen boughs, but they look, you know, just kind of blustery to me. So I thought this card, doing it with a similar style to hers would really be um, intriguing to me. So what I did was I also took, these are a, um, postage stamp die that is from, ooh, they will be showing up later in my series. I believe it's from the Greeteries Pretty Post Mark. Um, there's a stamp and I believe it is the bigger die out of this set here. So I took that and I'll be making these on camera, but I'm gonna die cut a lot of this out beforehand. Um, I just put them down on a piece of paper and centered that in there. This is a just a rectangle die out of the Spellbinders A2 Matting Basics A. Um, dies. So I felt like they, yeah, my camera is moving. I don't, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've like had to re keep redoing this video. Um, so hopefully that kind of straightens things up. So that was kind of where I was getting the inspiration for this card. And I kind of wanted to go through my ideology about it before I got further into it. And I started making it and then forgot where my ideas came from. So it's a big mix of her stuff. Um, this sketch, trying to remake something um, from this, not having what I have. Um, the only thing, I, like I said, this has the sentiment. I do like it on that little bit of a wave. So I, I kind of had a fishtail here I don't like the color, so I'm thinking, I don't know if I like the fishtail. So I'm thinking I may just leave it um, and not even care. But I definitely think the edges being white just are not doing it for me after having uh, colored everything else. Now I'm doing this with uh, distressed oxide inks, and this is the vintage um, photo, I think. Yes, vintage photo from Tim Holtz. And when I get everything cut out, I will be back and I will show you how I actually constructed this because there's a little bit going on here and you may not notice it. And I'm still looking. I think I want to do some, uh, some blinging up of some stuff. Um, and I got to make my decision on a sentiment. For me, unfortunately, the sentiment is always the last thing I think of. So we'll see what I can come up with. And I'll be back. So my first step was, this is going to give me the number of cards that I'm going to make, was I took those two sheets and I cut them. Um, I started with a four by five and a quarter, but I needed a little bit smaller because it was sticking out the sides of the frame. So I took an eighth of an inch off and that seemed to be what I needed um, to get it underneath the frame and hidden. And if I need to, I can still cut a little bit off. So having taken that measurement of it was basically three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that one will be 12 out of two sheets. So now I need to come up with 11 more components of all of this, which is all the pieces 
from this die set except for the steam. And there is um, two, and I'm thinking I may actually do a third uh, frame cut out and put on top of each other. So I'm going to start cutting 11 of all of this stuff and that's gonna give me 12 cards. I guess I should have said was, um, this paper is very forgiving in the pink from it. So I am taking my pink um, scrap bin here and I am just going to cut out, I told you before I use these plastic containers from like my, usually it's Stouffer's macaroni and cheese is what's coming out of that. But it's not really gonna matter. I'm gonna just start cutting out 11 of whatever pink I want that I can fit. So this is going to give me six and I had that up seven. So I just need, and this was the, I used this. I think this was like a lipstick color, a lovely lipstick or something from scrapping up. I didn't use like a real bright red for the uh, candy cane. So I'm definitely going to pull out um, this pink for the candy cane and I'm gonna get, um, I don't know, I may be able to use that for my, uh, like I said, I just need to come up with 11 and I don't want anything too bright. So I think I'm gonna get, I'm gonna probably be able to get a good chunk of these without having to go to my new stash yet. It's Kristen here. I have come to realize what a hot mess this series was because I oh, I started with these three. Um, sorry, I'm eating caramel popcorn. I shouldn't do that on camera, shouldn't I? I don't expect you to think I'm going to have perfection here. Well, it's just not me. This is like a kind of like grab your coffee tea and just hang out. That's the kind of personality I have, sorry. So I started with these three. I did fussy cut, oh, I guess I could put that on here. I did fussy cut all of the pieces off that sheet. Woo, yeah. You know, you see those sheets and they look like, I'm like, yeah, you know, what am I gonna do with that? Uh, there's, you know, it doesn't look like that much. Well, when you need a fussy cut, let me tell you, I had some cramps from cutting this. I don't know if I'm using it all. There is a lot of stuff in here. I'm trying to find that one piece. There it is. Oh my God, I need to put my, it says cheers. I thought that would look nice right there. I need to get my glasses on. Yeah, my old lady glasses. Oof. So I can see. So anyway, I started with these three. Let me finish this off. Now that that's fussy cut, you know, you know, I have been using this, this glue for over a week, making these other ones and it was fine. One of my cats has now just decided he is joining me in this chair. So if you see some gray fur coming, that is Mr. Mickey. Mr. Mickey is a stray who came to me as a kitten. Let me see if he wants to join the camera. He's rather prego. There he is. He's not too happy. Say hi, Mickey. Yeah. I don't know if you can see him. Anyway, he came to me as a starving stray of a kitten. He's rather plump now. He's a Russian blue. And they say that they have problems with obesity. I will attest to that. So anyway, I started with these three. Then I went to these, and yes, I've brought them down now. It's been like a week and a half since the hubby was gone. So I have these. I still haven't made any decisions on um, what I'm doing. I still think it needs a little something, something extra. Then I was going to go into... This is where I realized what a hot mess I am. I was going to go into this paper and that dye, and... A couple revelations came to me making this. One is I had a brand new uh, Copic C8 marker that I opened up and it is bone dry, yeah, bone dry. 
not exactly sure where it is from, so I can't take it back. Not that you could ever believe if I took it back that I didn't use it up myself. So that was gonna be the hat, and I kind of felt like it was a little flat. So I'm waiting because I'm thinking, I saw somebody do the mittens and the scarf using the coordinating scraps from this paper pack. Not that they used this particular paper pack, but from their paper pack when they made something, they made it with printed papers. So I'm gonna give that a try. So I'm still kind of like putting this aside until later. That's why I have not addressed where that card went. So then I did get into, um, whew, I have a couple, I had a video where I showed how I uh, measured this card. And I guess I intended it to be a standalone video and I did start putting it into the middle of this video. And I'm debating if I'm going to take it out. I'm thinking I'm not. I think I'm going to leave it in at this point. So when you're seeing this jump all over, this is just how Kristen's brain works. I am apologizing in advance because my brain just is constantly like thinking ahead instead of where I need to be at. So I spent the better part of a week um, because our retail business is starting to take off with Christmas deliveries and I've been trying to coordinate with vendors for that. So getting listings done and all, I've kind of put this to the back burner. So now I'm, bet, I'm bet, picking it back up. I did put all this together. Um, I did heavily um, age this more than the original. I was just using the brush and just going at it, man. I don't know. And it was only a cube. So go figure. So this is a little more antiqued up than I kind of thought I wanted it to be at first. And now I'm going to tell you the construction part of this was I just laid this down on the top half because yeah, it took me a little bit to remember how I did this. Um, and then, like, going back to this, I, you know, I just put this together. I, I don't know that there was really any big trick to that, you know. Just put this and then, you know, just glued it together. If we need further instruction on that, by all means, let me know. Have no issue. I'll, 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 I'll do that again. I, I, I did like that. Um, so to do the doily, I cut the doily about, I don't know, I, oh, whatever cut in. I just wanted to get into the solid part of this doily. And I just laid a bead of glue about an inch into, yeah, into that frame and laid it down. So that's it. Then I basically took from where the corner is and just cut in to where the lacy part starts. Nothing big scientific here. So then what well, that's what you're going to get. You need to cut these off. You can decide to glue them back. Um, I cut them off, but you know what? Looking at this now, it may be better to just glue them back. What you're just trying to do is hide them from being seen on the side of this frame. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut it off. So there's that. Now you have to push this doily through here. And that's what's going to make it so it's more of a 3D effect is what I was kind of going for here. Now I kind of had to just snip off this and make it a little bit more straight. You don't have to do that. Um, to give you a reference, here's one I did not do it on. Here's one that I did do it on. Um, these kind of, I just wanted it kind of smashed up to look like it was just sitting, you know, like on a table with a toy, with a tablecloth on it. It's kind of what the effect I was going for. So you can choose to cut it. You don't have to. I just figured it was kind of in the way. Now I would tell you to glue down the frame and you're going to have to go behind the doily and in front of the doily. I thought that 
doily would have like enough kind of holes in it. But you know what I found? The particular ones I have, I guess, aren't that holy. Okay, that's not religion. Just trying to make a crappy joke there. So the straight line to me gave it like it was sitting, like I said, like on a table. And then I just laid this on there. Uh, put a little on the handle because that's going to happen. And I don't know what these cats of mine are trying to get into. So I just trying to kind of lay it so my handle was in the frame. And you only need to really put down like one little tiny bead of glue on the back of your candy canes. Then I just kind of smashed this up. Again, nothing real scientific here. I did put a little bit of glue here to kind of hold that up. Just because, like I said, I know it's going to get, when you put it in a card or in an envelope, it's going to get kind of smashed up anyway. So then, you know, I'm going to clean up my mess here. I should have had, there's that squeaky chair, you know it's me. I need to put these all on card bases, and I'm not going to do all that on um, camera. But here's the one thing, oh my, like, oh, I thought that was cut wrong. Um, what I do want to do to show you, though, is I did not like just the bright white. So I'm, like I said, I got kind of heavy handed with the, uh, with the brush and my ink. I'm not sure how much I'm waiting on a reanchor to come. Um, I'm going to scrap under there. So I'm just going to edge up, a, I'm going to just, um, antique up a little bit of the edge on here. See, I need a reanchor. That's why I can't do it. But when the reanchor gets here, this is what I intend to do is kind of uh, just distress the sides a little bit so it's got a little bit of not being bright white. And eh, there's a little bit on there, not much, but yeah, so I'm gonna stamp, I need you now. So that is where I'm at with that. I will do those when that re-anchor gets here and glue them on. And that will be card design number three. So that's where Kristen's mind has been going because Kristen's all over the place. I think I'm going to have to just make this more of like crafting with Kristen live because I just don't, yeah, I, I just don't think like how to make things perfect. So we went over the snowman, what I was going to do there. And then this one, I've decided I want to use this sketch by Jana Eubank. I kind of liked that where it was a stripe, uh, strip and you know, there's supposed to be like a solid card stock here, then a solid piece here, a scrap here. And then I was going to do the three here with the sentiment being in white. So I'm thinking I should be able to use this to cut out several of these. And you know what? I'm going to be missing some of it, but whatever. Um, because I really, I don't know what I would do with this side. So that's my intent of what I'm going to do here. So off camera, I'm going to cut them. This is what I literally have left. I showed you the two sheets that I'm using with the snowman. I'm not getting into that until I see what scraps I have left. So that was this sketch. So what I have left is I have this full sheet of this mauve color um, and the back has all of those sentiments that I cut out. Like I said, it doesn't look like that many sitting there, does it? Um, and again, I, I cut all them out and I really don't have any paper left. So we're going to have to see what we're going to do with whatever over there. So I'm thinking this is going to give me six cards, um, which means I need 18 of these. And if you think about that, it's like three strips and a partial. So I will have some scrap left with this, you know, whatever on it. Um, so, oh my God, my cats are upstairs playing, or hopefully not beating each other up. No, they're playing. Um, oh, thank God. So, yeah. Do you think, you know, like, mothering never ends with pets? Um, 
So that will pretty much eat up this, this. Then the um, strip I was going to use, ooh, was going to be, I think I was going with the slate pink. Now I messed everything up. <gasps> what was I doing? I think it was gonna be this one, let's say. Because then I only have like these strips of stuff left here. I'm dropping stuff on the floor. If, the, if anything has to go anywhere, it just can't go on the other side of the table. It's got to go on the floor every time. So then I had this Viva Lover, if that's how you say it. I had three years of French in high school and I can't say anything. Um, sketch by Amber Height. I guess how you say that. H-I-G-H-T. Mm, light height, I guess. So I'm figuring that this could be the centerpiece. I think I'm not, this is like a square card. I think I'm going to do them in, I wanted to do a landscape or horizontal, but um, I don't think I can do that. So maybe I'll do them this way. We'll see. I figure I can get at the most three out of this piece of paper. I'll have a little bit left, but not much. So I'll get three out of here. And I figured this was a good sketch. I have these tiny little strips. Don't we always get these when we do this? So I have this strip and this strip I was going to use. And then they have like the chunky pieces on the side. And then in the circle, I was gonna use some of those cut aparts and, and like see if I could just create a little like scene of some sort with them. But that's not gonna use them very much of them. So having said that, um, the two for that and then this as the background is what I'm thinking here. So, oh, you know what? That's what it was. These were going with this card sketch. See, I had it all worked out and I messed them up. So this was going with this card sketch and then whatever I have left from here, I'm gonna see what I can roll into here and make with these pieces because I have these and I'm thinking you know I can I can sketch I'm gonna do my sketch however I can measure out to use up like these pieces here so I may just get like three I, I don't know that it's gonna be really more than that um because I'm figuring one two two boxes out of that probably like one two Mm. Yeah, I may actually have some extra pieces left over. And then like I said, anything left over, I'm making, um, I'm gonna get, I think like 12, 12 out of the snowman paper. So, you know, scraps, I have a, a few other ones off screen that were kind of duplicates to things I already had. So these I could see doing, I'm gonna have like a, I guess a pink scarf and muffin, or it's muffin, mitten. God, I swear I've eaten dinner. I don't know what I'm thinking muffin. So here's what I'm thinking with those. I'm gonna start cutting stuff and putting together. And when I'm back with some of that, I will come back. So let me, I had to move my camera and I can't even shut it off. I started doing this and I thought, you know what? I I'm guessing when I get back into this, I gotta figure out what the width of this is here. And I started cutting and we're doing the base layer and I can't do this sideways as four inches by five and a quarter inches. So this is going to be um, three and seven eighth inches by five and one eighth inches because I'm going to do that as a as a quarter inch reveal. So I will put that down on my paper now. And look at that, my glue is working without giving me a hard time. I thought maybe it went on strike. It stays are numbered because I bought a new one, let me tell you. I can't get the lid off. The lid is literally glued on onto the bottle. So having said that, so that is that. Now, if I want to do these, I'm still kind of playing around with what I'm going to do here. Um, 
this here is a roughly two inch circle. And that's kind of what I felt I needed. I don't think I could go any smaller. I have, again, I don't know where I got this. I call them China Special. I don't know if I bought it off of like eBay from just someplace, you know, from China. I have no idea. I'm sorry. This kind of stuff drives me nuts when I have glue or tape stuck to something where it shouldn't be. Um, so if I went down, it was too small. I mean, this was the next one and like you could barely, barely see anything. Um, so that to me was too small. So I'm basing this design off of what I can get for cutting out from these. You know, I have so many of these cut aparts. I'm wondering if, you know, that may just be for the best that I just cut the what I'm trying to get out of this is I'm going to get six sheets from this paper pack. And then I have plenty of these other strips. I can get one, two, three, I'm going to get, I can get six out of these. I guess that's my six. And then I still have this. Yeah. I could get this. I probably could get 12 if I cut that. You know what? I think that's the route I'm gonna go because there are so many cut aparts. So like that would be really cute with that in a circle. Um, I really like some of these flowers, but I don't know that I would put them like in a circle like that. Um, I could even do like a little scene with like the cat and then just do like that. Um, the tree is great, but I guess it's like, it's going to be a little too big. Then I think there's like a present. I think this is supposed to be a top, but to me that is so an ornament. Um, I'm sorry. This again, huge. I don't see me doing that with it. Um, the joy is cute, but I don't think that's going to be worthwhile. The snow globe could be another. Um, I got a cute dog. So I'm going to try and start kind of like making like things of what would be cute scenes. Um, open May would be cute with a small package. Like that, again, I don't know what they're supposed to be. I guess chocolate covered pretzels would just really looks kind of weird. Um, I have like a stocking that is cute. So maybe if I could come up with like six of these, like a cat sleeping. Oh, um, that is like almost too big. Like I said, it, you gotta kind of like start piece in the mouth. I really don't like these. They can go away. These ones, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Um, this piece on earth would probably be cute, like combined with that and that, and maybe the dog, but I don't know what I'm going to do with the dog. The dog needs something else. Maybe, maybe the dog needs a heart. Um, more of those. Yeah, so here we've got one, two, three, one, two, with the dog would be cute. Um, the stocking. Um, you know what? This would probably be cute together. These three. Here's like a package from the mail. Like maybe that's like a care package kind of one. That kind of looks like a stamp to me. Like maybe put those together. Um, then I had the cat with that little saying in it, another stocking. Here's another one. Like that thing is big. I don't see me doing anything with that. Not with this kind of setup. Um, so as you can see, like you just kind of start f moving them around. Like here's a good one. Um, that's hot chocolate. And I think 
maybe like one of those little bonbon looking things. I don't know what that's supposed to be, like a cupcake or fruit cake or who knows. Um, here's another, here's an ornament. So maybe do these ones together. There's one, two, one, two, three, three, three. There's four. Um, put these together. Put those together. Well, this was a bonbon, so we want to keep the bonbon separate. Um, oh, that was one of my, um, ooh, that was a marshmallow from my hot chocolate. I thought the yarn was kind of cute to go with a cat stretching, but I got to say, I think there may be another cat in here somewhere. I guess that's supposed to be a Christmas ornament. The Let It Snow was cute. I think I um, put that as a sentiment with something in here. So I'm pulling all the evergreen looking ones out. Oh, here's another hot chocolate. How cute is that? Um, another package. So I'm going to just start piecing these together. Um, you know what? I could probably use some of these big ones and some of the packages and things like that and create a card front. I don't know why, like, they just give you logs. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Um, yeah, I know. Uh, some of the stuff I looked at it, and I was like, I, I'm not quite sure what, what it is. Um, yeah. Here's another cat. So maybe the cat with that arm. Mm -hmm. My cats don't really play with the ball yarn. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, they play with everything else. You know, like things you don't want them playing with. Um, you know, they want to stretch out in front of the TV kind of thing. Computer screens and, you know, things like that. I think people that don't have cats design some of this stuff sometimes. So anybody that has cats knows. Um, so, this is all the stuff I'm deeming to not be um, for this design. They're... they're great and I, I can see using them but I just don't see them using them so now this whole thing has evolved to um you know what these are going to be good I'll use this paper that I'm giving up so I need to come up with now Ooh, see how I get sidetracked it all started with trying to measure this but I'm going to cut these out of regular white cardstock. I'm going to layer them with, because I told you I'm keeping my layers within this craft paper. So I will do that with, um, I guess, the, my next size up die. Ooh, these are going away. I'm, I'm throwing them in the trash. So then I will come up with um, six pairings of stuff. This looks like it's too big. Um, put it aside. So we will come up with, I'm going to just cut my tr my circles, and then I will start pairing these up on them from that. So having said that, let's go back to this. Oh, my. So this was two inches. I can kind of change these as I need to. But I do have strips that I want to use and these strips are the one is like one and three quarters like one and five eighths no seven eighths one and seven eighths I can't do my math in my head no one and I guess yeah one and seven eighths oh god help me um, this one's the same width, looks like, no, oh, I, I don't know. This is the one I want to be able to get two out of, and it's basically going to be about an inch and a half. So as you can see, um, this strip here is about two inches, but I'm going to cut this. This is going to be my barometer. I'm going to just make these whatever the widths are. I'm backing them up with craft paper, and then I'm going to put these layers on top. So I will be back and... You won't have to listen to my ramblings. I'm sorry. Hey, it's Kristen, and I'm back. So I started cutting out um, several things. I've got all my 
card fronts kind of together here and I started to cut out my strips and I'll get to that in a minute because I was really having a tough time. Um, this was the original like two inch circle. And when I went through, um, one of the things I'm coming to find when you get a lot of these ones that are like, you know, nesting like this, they must need a quarter of an inch to get them to nest up like this. And you can see these are kind of, you know, not quite equally separated here. So when I did the next one up, there was this huge reveal and I did not like that. Um, when you start looking like it's almost like the whole front again, cause it's two inches. You know, I should have just did the math on that one. Right? So then I started trying to fool around with some stamps and some dot or some punches and some dies. And I started like doing this one. Um, you can see, like I started really trying to get to different sizes. I wanted just like an eighth of an inch reveal. So then I went down a size and that was okay, but I didn't really still feel like the reveal was small enough. So what it wound up working for me was I took a circle punch out of here, which is basically a one and seven eighth, which is what I was looking for. And I, I out of all of my punches and die sets, like nobody had a one and seven eighths. It was really kind of weird. So I wound up finding that in the Queen and Company's Foundation die set 10 of all things. I had to go through all of them. And then, so these are going to go in the trash. Like I said, these were just like way too big. Not really anything I wanted. So I wound up getting this as a one and seven eighths and I have a punch for one and, or no, I guess it was a one and five eighths and then this was a one and three quarters. So this is what wound up working out for me with these two combinations. And personally, for this kind of a project, I'd much rather have a punch because you can just blow them out so much faster. So then I went through and I started separating them out. And honestly, some of them like this one was way too big. So we're putting them aside right now. Um, get my thing back. Because I'm going to wind up doing um, some kind of card where that's on the front. I, I, to me, when I'm done with this paper pack, I want to be done. Like I want all of this stuff used up. I, I'm not planning to revisit this again. So I don't understand when people get like ephemera packs and I, I don't like, to me, it's like, well, what do you do with the rest of it? So to me, I'm going to try and use up everything I can here. Um, and that would be on another card. This is what I have for the strip that's here. And when I started to lay this out, again, you gotta kind of like start eyeing it up. So I, this was going to be my thinnest at one and a half. And I, I swear the gremlins come when you're not looking. Oh, there it went. And they steal this stuff. So I know this is the width I want, but I don't really know what length I want yet. So I kind of wanted to wait until I had all of my pieces laid out. Um, and glued on. So now I can kind of start laying this out so I can get, like, this may be a good length for me right now. Um, this was just a piece of scrap paper I cut that I could use to get this width. And another thing I will say is you need to be aware, like, not every craft paper is made the same. I don't know if you can tell. I got these and they're two totally different. It's a very, dis like, I don't know if you can see that. A very <coughs> different dye lot. So um, to me, you know, it may not be that big of a deal, but when I would start laying them down and they'd be on top of each other, you would notice it. So I very much um, recommend that you definitely pay attention to papers, dye lots and stuff, because they do change. So I am kind of thinking that this um, length may be good. Again, I'm looking at this, I'm using this for inspiration. I don't have to follow this. Um, I think this may be a good one. So I'm gonna lay that out. And then what I did was, when I went through, I had three of these. Now I'm gonna start dissecting. I have six cards I'm making. I have three stockings, so they're all going on a different card. And I have three with the 
cocoa and cookie. So if I get the cocoa and cookie, I don't want them to have this one that has a little like bonbon and cookie. So they're going to go over here. So that leaves me with um, three different, I think that's supposed to be a top. I'm looking at it as an ornament. So they're going over here. Um, and then I have two different cats. So the cats can go over here. Then I have three different packages. So three packages can go here. So then I just need one and one. Now I'm gonna look like this is very dark, so I'll put something light. And then these are all kind of dark, so yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, they kind of look better that way to me. Um, so I wanna look through, make sure they kind of look, um, you know, like you don't have everything in the same color family. Uh, so they're all kind of, so these are good. So I'm going to lay out my six now groups. And then what I did pull out was um, have these greens out of there. And I know for me, I'm not going to use these greens with, um, I, I'm envisioning this is going to be two different tree scenes because I have two different trees in here. Um, I have this one with a wreath and that I'm kind of thinking they go together. So I don't see me using evergreens with that. So I pulled these out and I separate them. I got these two greens, um, this style. So they have different styles in here. So what I'm thinking is to start separating these into little piles. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is lay this out and put some greens kind of like behind these when they go down. So these are going to go down in such a way as to be kind of like this. So I'm thinking to use the greens just to kind of fill in a, a corner up there. So I'm going to start laying them out. I'm not sure if I like them better that mixed or the same. I may do like, so I think I like that better. And again, like I said, I, my purpose is I want to use up all this stuff I fussy cut. I spent the time cutting. I want to use them up. I may save these. Maybe I'll use these. Um, they may be good with the wreath in some way. Um, these are maybe for something else. So I'm going to focus on laying out some different... I'm going to cut my... Uh, whatchamacallits now, my strips here. Yeah, I have a lot of whatchamacallits, don't I? Um, several of my whatchamacallits I'm gonna cut out. Uh, maybe I'll put that with that, and that gives me one, two, three. That gives me my six right there. So that's how I'm gonna use them. I'll put that over there. So I'm gonna lay these out um, how I like them best and start gluing them down. And then that'll give me this card front. And then I do need to come up with touch of my sentiment is always the last thing I think about. So I'll get that on to there and I'll be back. So I am now done with my uh, six cards. I still have to put them on card bases, but that's what they came out with. So now I have these strips. You know, when you cut the uh, card layers and they're like four by five and a quarter or whatever, these are the little strips that come off and I save them just for this purpose because now I don't have to try and cut these little strips of paper to put my sentiments on. Oh, and Miss Molly is here to let me know it is dinner time. So this is how I decided to go. I didn't do the sentiment. This, this sketch has it all the way across. I just thought it was too much going on with that. And that's another reason why I went with just um, a bolder, oh, things are falling in here. Bolder sentiment. And I keep cutting off the bottom of my Y's. Why, oh why? Yeah, okay. Um, I need four more. So maybe, maybe I can get these ones right. And this is why I don't care either, because I don't feel like I'm like, oh, smudge that one. That's another reason why I don't, like, I don't feel like, oh, if I screw it up, I don't care. Because these were just scraps that were going to go in the trash anyway. Um, God, my, I'm using this Blackberry Bliss 
stamp pad from stamping up and I guess it is very moist. So if they're not quite straight, I'm not really caring right now because I can trim them down. This thing has got ink all over. I am liking this. This is another one from this stamp set that I just, I don't even know where I got it from. Oh, Hero Arts C1343. Oh, I didn't even mark that on my thing. Ooh, on its um package. I just put it as miscellaneous because I didn't see it. But I do like the fonts in here. Um, Now that one I got the eye off because I think the problem is this is not... Um, you know, you try to cut these as even as could be when you're cutting your paper, but I must have made a mistake. So, you yeah, know, I'll just throw that out, because like I said, it was going to be trash anyway. So I just need five of those, and I guess I'll go with those five. And then, um, I got to find some scraps of my, well, I've got assorted ones of my car my craft paper and I'll just map them up and put them on I've got to put them on and I still got to do my um other ones on bases so I'm going to do all that clean up this and then I will be back with the next card so all right I've taken the rest of these fussy cut papers and laid them out um to what scenes I'm seeing, whether they come to fruition or not, I don't know. Um, so I've got this one here that I'm gonna replicate with the cat and this other one. I'm thinking this one with this joy banner and these two. Um, these two I'm thinking together, something with this. And then I'm wondering, I may just do this very simple circle punch out that sentiment and leave it. So there's possibly one, two, three, four, five cards here. So this is going to be, my idea on this is going to be a window card with this like starry night scene, which I said, since I wasn't gonna use these other cutter parts, I thought this looked like a kind of like starry night scene. So this card's gonna get a little more than I expected. Um, and here's the pieces I expect I am not going to use. Um, and I already threw out those few that look like chocolate covered pretzel hearts or something. So these ones are just going in a, a donate box, you know, I don't know, maybe some after school program to get them and kids will love them. I don't know. So what I have here is a regular white card base. I cut the story scene. This is a four and a five by quarter here. And what I did like is I cut it out with this layering ovals from um, Stamping Up. I don't even know if it's current anymore. Again, I've been doing this for you know so long. I don't even know what's current with them anymore. But what I liked about it is, yeah, it was layering ovals. I don't know if you could tell, it left a little bit of like an indent in there. So that kind of gave it like a framing, which I liked. So this has to be a little bit smaller than that. I intend to, um, I'm going to glitter up this paper, but I'm going to work on this off of the card front. So what I'm thinking here is, this is some paper tray ink, clear cardstock is I think what they called it. And it came with this like blue film, I guess, so that you didn't like it fingerprints all over it. Um, it's very thick for an acetate. So, you know, you could use any kind of an acetate. I'm putting this on the back because I'm feeling like I'm going to kind of put the tree here and put this there to kind of give it like a, like they're sitting in the window looking out. I am going to, um, I mean, yeah, I could do it without the clear, but I just thought it added a little something more. And I was debating about doing this in a color, you know, maybe even the craft will look better. I don't know. I think I'm leaving it with the white. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some um, glue and glitter. Here's a little glitter myself. And glitter up this back. So let's get this going. I'm going to put the tree here. I want to get that's in there. I'm planning on doing some... Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to put this on some foam tape when this is done. And now the other reason why I'm thinking that the acetate would be good is because this tree is going to be kind of just hanging out. And without that on the back, because the, the, like I said, I want to I want to foam tape this up. I feel like that tree, or that tree is just going to like fall back. So by giving this some acetate... And like I said, this was paper tray ink. They called it um, clear cardstock back in the day. I don't know if it's even something they sell anymore, truthfully. Um, I just feel like I said it's going to give it, I'm trying not to touch it so I don't get my fingerprints. It's going to give it a little bit of something behind it that I can kind of attach to. Just a little bit back there. Um... I think I'm going to see if I have like some Wink of Stella or something to put on the star. Uh, I don't know. I may actually add some glitters or something to that. So now we'll put the dog here. You know what? Maybe some sequins. If I can find some small sequins to put on there like they're like some ornaments or something. Yeah, they didn't really give us. I thought this would be cute to give it like the sentiment without me having to having to stamp I don't know if I yeah I guess I have stamped some sentiments the thing with these that I was getting kind of like confused about was like you got to watch the this, this goes up so this is like the top but I didn't want it that way so I'm going to do it this way but I, I didn't want to put the strings because they would look wrong if they went the opposite way because the strings go up over the package so that will be my card front. Then I plan to, um, where is my oh Lord. You know, you see all these people and they're using all these products and you're like not really knowing how things are in size until you get it yourself. And baby, this Scotty thing is like huge. Like I, I put it in my Calyx system that I have here, the, the bookcase thing from Ikea. And let me tell you, I can't even get the door shut. This roll was so wide. Um, I'm used to buying those dimensionals from Stampin' Up! And let me tell you, when you buy those, um, I, I like them because the thinness of them, but you're kind of getting shortchanged when you start looking at them. I mean, I don't know, maybe it works out because this wasn't the cheapest either. Um, another way, if you're trying to do this without using foam tape, you probably could use strips of paper, but I didn't really, I didn't really want to go there. Um, so I'm going to get myself, see, and I, I think I'm still going to have to cut this seam down problem is you can't you got to watch too because I don't want this stuff showing inside so all of this is going to be on the card front so that you can open it up and I don't do inside sentiments because I told you before I use these as giveaways and I want my clients to use them and put whatever they want for the inside so let me finish preparing these other scenes, like I said, I plan on doing this in a cat version. I don't really know yet. Um, like I said, I'm thinking in this same scene of um, doing it. And I'm thinking of doing like something like this with this one. Um, these hanging off the side and just doing... Like it's, these logs are kind of like weird. Um, so that's what I'm thinking of doing for that one. Cause I'll do this, like I said, off camera so you don't have to really sit and watch me. And then this one I'm thinking of doing like, ooh, I, I don't know if I'm gonna do the story night background, 
um, I may do something different because I'm thinking, like I said, of doing these kind of in a corner and then doing like these down below. Um, so I may do these on a totally different theme, but I think these ones I'm going to continue with the Starry Night. So let me lay those out and then I will be back. So here's what I've done with the other two. And you may not really be able to see it, but I did add some glitter inside. To me, this is kind of like a shaker card, except you're not, um, you know, enclosing it with stuff loose. I'm just going to dab paper. I'm just dabbing the paper with some of my glue. Um, you do because there's a, tech, there's a height to it. I do have to sprinkle this on or it will kind of like drip. And, you know, I take a look and see if there's any other spots that I want it. And then, um, yeah, I know there's a lot of people that don't like to use glitter, but I, I do. Um, you know, I try not to go overboard with it, but I do kind of feel that when you put this on top, it does kind of enclose it in there, so it's not going to be running all over um you know when people open the card it's not like it's gonna be like on the surface it's still kind of in there and if it falls off it's still in, in there i do have it on my workstation but so now that's in there the one thing i did um probably could have cut this background paper a little bit smaller but i was afraid that i wouldn't be able to catch it all around and I have it all around so now we just glue that to the front like I said it's kind of like a shaker but um and it's kind of like a scene builder so we have our little doggy we have our little cat and I did switch out um the teapot to this with this scene it just um I was trying to use a piece of this acetate and it wasn't quite, quite long enough. So that was, I finished those three off. And now I have three sheets of this like lighter gray ombre and I have these ovals that cut out from the center. So I'm thinking I'm going to kind of put these in the back, pop this up and make it as another like little scene builder. And I'm thinking I will put, um, something behind this paper as a layer. I haven't quite gotten that far and it is it's getting on close to midnight here so I think I'm calling it a night tonight. Um, and then I have this one where I'm going to punch this out and I think I'm going to do the same thing. I think I'm going to put that on here and I'm going to punch this out but push the um, whatchamacallit up the, the wreath. So I had to get my circle dies back out. So we will continue this tomorrow. It is Saturday and the boys will be away again. So for me, um, I'm going to just spend the day crafting and I think I want to figure out how to use Facebook Live because I think what I'd like to do is start doing some Facebook Live. Um, so as I'm making this stuff, you know, for those of you that want to kind of watch the process as I go along, because some people do like making multiples of cards, and they're looking for some shortcuts, and I feel that, um, you know, some people are also looking to connect. And that's kind of why we do crafts, is so we can get together. I'm sorry for the noise I'm cleaning up. Um, so I think tomorrow... Uh, I'm going to put some effort into trying to figure out how to do some Facebook Lives, why I'm working, and possibly doing recordings um, for these as many as series as well. So maybe by the time I air this, you guys will already have watched me over on the channel for my Facebook. Sooner or later, I think I'm going to try and figure out how I can do two, um, two, uh, what do you call it, views, so that I can 
to you why I'm working, we'll say. Um, and there's my, I kept this because I don't know if I can cut some of those off the front, but truthfully, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think things are just kind of rolling to the end because I have these, um, and then this is really all I have left. Some very small stuff. And I did not forget that I do want to make this other one here. So that's a thought for tomorrow. So good evening for now, and I'll catch you tomorrow. It's Kristen, and I'm back. It's been a couple nights since I've been down here. And I was left with a few of these cut-aparts that didn't fit the, the other um, cards I made. So I made one out of, I was going to use these on a different card, and I said, you know what? I didn't really know. I wanted to do this, and I didn't know what was going to be in the center anyway. So I'm going to use this one here, and I'm going to use this one here. This is going to be the scraps I have left. So I really didn't have a whole lot of things to pick from in the different, um, you know, prints. I really want to try and make something more with this, and I've got several of these, but the, um, the backgrounds were not great. So I had debated about using these here, um, but I didn't like the ombre going this way. So it kind of left me with this, like, pinkish mauve. And here goes my camera again. Excuse me. I don't know why it's doing this. So, I think we're getting there. So, to get this figured out, this was a really easy one. This was this Viva Le Vire, however you say it. I used to know French. Um, this is a, a card that's basically um, five and three quarters in length. So, I really didn't have to do much. I just kind of rounded these down like this was two and a quarter and I said I'm going to do it two and an eighth. So this was a simple sketch to break down. So what we did here is this is the Blackberry Bliss paper from Stamping Up. Um, I thought it kind of coordinated with this pad or this color in this paper pack. It was a nice offset. So. I didn't want this pack around because it's kind of like busy. Not too busy in my opinion. So we went with a full coverage on the front and then this is just the four by five and a quarter. And then this was the one and five eighths by two inch and I just cut the, um, oh, I just cut these back uh, layer pieces an eighth of an inch bigger. And I was a little, I thought they kind of looked in this um, sketch, and you could do this either way, with the ombre going from lighter to darker or darker to lighter. I'm just putting them on here over it landed. Um, these looked like they were like the same size, but you know what? They're not. Um, I was kind of surprised with that. So this was uh, one and five eighths by two inches, and then this one is one and seven eighths by two and an eighth. So it's not a huge difference, but you do need to pay attention to your scraps if you're going to use this one. Um, I made a point to specifically use that one there because it was not as wide as um, the striped one. So this sketch was easy to kind of line up because this, and I'm not even lining up. Just going to look at me, I'm not even lining up straight. Um, I should have been using the polka dots. This though, if I tried to lay this down, it just was like real like weavy. So I figured I needed to have a um, layer in the back. And this was good because I had these tiny thin little strips of paper from cutting stuff off. And you know, it's funny, like you just don't even think you're going to use it, but you do. Um, or you can if you so choose to do it. I'm not putting a reveal on this side. The only reason I'm doing this particular layer on this is because of that thickness on the, um, those, with those squares. It was just so thick. 
So I'm just trying to give the tiniest little reveal on this strip. So that, um, and I'm finding I like to use the Stampin' Up! trimmer to get these like much smaller pieces than my guillotine. I just, I don't know, for me it's a little bit of an issue. Oh, I also did mean to put some, this definitely needed the thin strips to make sure you have it even out um, so you don't have a dip because it's going to be almost like a springboard. You know, think like a diving board here if not. Um, so I did need to add these little scraps to the two ends so that it all lays flat on this card. Um, let me get this out of the way. Scraps out of the way. Yeah, so my one layer here is not really that level but you know what by the time I get the rest of the stuff on here you're not even gonna notice um so I had these ovals left over from making these cards so I thought well I might as well use them I know it's like a circle on this one but you know it's in the same family right so I'm going to create like a little scene here this was one I already had glue on from doing another try out on that other scene over there and it didn't work out so I'm going to do and then I have this strip and I looked in the back and lo and behold there is this kitty cat so I thought I was done cutting out but you know what I, I was debating about cutting this beforehand and I said it's not gonna take it long and that's one of the things I said you know what sometimes we don't want a fussy cut so we just like get intimidated but some of these are so easy just just take the two seconds and because honestly I'm never going to match up the I don't know if you would call it a genre um, of this set like there's no way I'm gonna find a stamp set that's going to match up but I thought that looked kind of cute throw him in there use up more of that paper pack I'm gonna stick this to kind of hang up the top. I may not even use it. That's kind of getting a little cluttered. Um, and the sketch called for something here. I wound up adding in a, uh, a this little sprig in the back. Because again, I want to use it up. So let's do some foam tape on the back of this oval. I said, I love watching how people, you know, do stuff, but they get to the end of stuff and there's still like ephemera left and things like, and I'm like, well, what do they do with that? Like, do they make more cards? Like I always kind of look at it and think like, oh God, I don't want to have to find a home for like stuff in my, like, I want this stuff out of my craft room. That's what this whole like goal of trying to um, make as many as and everything because I want the stuff to go on. Um, my chair. And I look at it that by the time this is all said and done, you know, like I don't want to not do something with it and, you know, throw it out because to me, it's not necessarily just the money. I just, I think it's so cute. Like I don't want to waste it. So then I like hoard it and I stick it aside because it's too cute yeah and then it just keeps piling up so my new motto if i have the discipline to follow it is i either use it all up or have to throw it away so usually i force myself to keep working because i get like like i said i just don't want to part with it i figure you know if i make something with it, it, it it's good because you know somebody else can enjoy it but if i throw it away like nobody else gets to enjoy it some of the stuff, like I said, I've got a box going over here of scraps. I'm going to see if, you know, that my son was in after school many years ago. He's 18 now, so that tells you how long ago. But they used to um, not be able to have things for their kids unless they bought it because um, they didn't have the same budgets as the schools. 
So I used to, at the time I was like yard selling and stuff, I used to buy them. Um, you know, they had like extras of stuff. Like um, they'd have tons of like the little Fisher Price little toys, but all the kids would take like the animals home and stuff. So like they had the toy, but nothing to go with it. So I used to buy that stuff when I found it at yard sales. So I'm ex thinking that it's probably in that same situation right now. They're probably still needing stuff. I can't imagine all of a sudden they got a budget from somewhere, so who knows. But I think the little kids would like stuff like that. I had a little artsy fartsy kid, so, you know, I used to love making mom all kinds of stuff. Um, I debated about putting something behind that, and uh, I don't know, I got lazy. It's basically the it's basically why it doesn't have something. I just figured there's tons of layers too. I'm using a 3 8 inch um, punch and I'm making um, just calls for three dots. I'm cutting out six because with all of this layer on this card, I feel like if I don't put two, they're going to get kind of lost. They're going to look like an afterthought, which they kind of are, but you know. Um, I put my center one down first because to me, then I can center or do the other two um, more easily after I, I have the, the center one. So I know I have it in the spot I want it. And of course, I still can't get this stuff kind of right. So then I'll just put my other ones on top to give me a little bit more depth and then I think this card is going to have a call I'm gonna call a day on this one I decided to just try and keep it simple I was debating to put some sparkle and yeah I could just keep going but I'm not and my last absolute last thing is I'm using white on this one because the cut parts are on a white background Whereas most of the other paper pack lend itself to being in that cream color. So, I don't even know what car design we're on now. It's, you know, wherever. So, get that on there. And that is the car design. I don't know, we'll, we'll get a count at the end for those. So now I need a um, plan for what I'm doing with these scraps. So I will be back. I guess I'm going to figure something out and I will be back. I'm back with the next card and this has probably became one of my favorites. I just loved how this came out. Um, in case you can't tell, I would challenge you to guess at first sight. This one I had to use in pieces versus having a full sheet going in this direction of the gingerbread. So this inspiration came from looking at this, well, I, I was looking for strip to go up and down because of the direction of this, and I liked this Mojo Monday sketch 541 is what I think it says in there. You do have to change this, uh, this strip is four by one and, ooh, wait, this was, I did this one in one and three quarters, because that's what the paper was. This was a oh, one and three quarters, because that's what I had left of that as well. So here comes the husband, and I'm guaranteeing he's going to say something. So that was the inspiration for that. So like I said, this night sky, just it looked like a night sky, like a dusk. So I loved the sentiment from your next stamp. And it's called eggnog season. And I loved this. Nobody really does eggnog. Let me tell you, my mom makes some killer eggnog. So um, I love this because like I said, not many, I don't, this was the only eggnog one I've ever seen. So I did try this in black first because I wanted to color and I'm going to tell you, it did not match at all. So I did this with um, Gina Kay's Warm Cocoa. I thought it matched perfect with that craft color paper. So to put this card in pieces, 
And we'll start with a regular card base in white. Then a craft layer. And I didn't want to do a big reveal. So this is only uh, five and three eighths by four and an eighth because I didn't want a big white reveal. Then I had to piece these in. This is supposed to be four by five and a quarter, but I didn't have that much available. Now this I wanted to make sure, because like I said, it's supposed to be dusk. I wanted the dark going up. So I have to make sure that both of these pieces are going up. And I had this little bit here and I was debating about filling it in, but you know what? This other piece with the two layers really did not make, um, I mean, I had to do it. This piece, was the one and three quarters by four. And I cut the layer to go all the way across, but I didn't need um, a reveal on the end because I went all the way over to the four. I felt like I didn't want any of the other, there's just too many busy patterns going on here. So this one, I did mount. And then I just cut it in half. So here we go. Make sure you cut it in half like straight. So then I did need this creaky chair to stop creaking. Um, you just need I'm using up all these all these scraps I have. I am going to go with, because I have a lot of scraps here, to get this really level, I'm going to do the cardstock and the printed paper so we can get this really level. And... Now I'm going to make sure I'm covering up that seam, but I'm coming to the bottom. So this is where I am going to leave the gap. Now for this one, I need more. So I have this bigger scrap here. So let's get this level. And if you haven't done this on other cards, this is going to be really important on this one because you're layering the sentiment up and you're trying to hide a seam. So, like I said, I do have these extra little scraps, so I will use them up. Why waste them? Unless I gotta try and take out of this basement to put in the trash, right? Trash just fills up so fast, I don't know how. All right, so that hides all of that. Or that'll level that up, we're not hiding it. Now we're gonna hide. So now you gotta get to the end, but you're also going to have to make sure you're straight here. I know some people, they go and they measure it. No, I, I just, I can't do all the measuring. So now I do want to make sure I hide this little seam in here. So I will just stick a piece of cardstock in so that I can get that sentiment on there and keep it level. So now, throw aside these scraps and put the sentiment on my mist. I'm going to stamp that first. On this other piece of scrap. And I have to be a little bit more in the middle of the paper because I'm going to die cut after I stamp it. Um, I kind of did it that way so I can just get my die um, centered over and I have to try and 
get the stamp centered to it. Um, I just keep having this part of tis not coming out too far apart. So now I have once I die cut that, does that was it my glasses or is that oh, I was gonna say does it look blurry, but I guess not. So now I can die cut this, but I wanna kinda liked having the little gingerbread egg cup there on that side. So I'm going to do this so I get an opening over here. Um, so there we go. I'll pull this away. And I'll be, I don't know, I tried the black because I didn't know if I could use alcohol markers with this dye ink, you know. But, I'm just not one of these people that really remembers dye and opaque and whatever all these things are. I don't know. So there's my sentiment. Um, I'm one of the people that I just do it by testing. And whether you're supposed to do this or not, you wound up taking very well. So I have a limited supply of... Um, Copic markers. I'm trying to build up my supply, but I figured um, this. I have YG67, and honestly, I barely had to touch the tip to the paper because this is a very, very tiny area to cover, which is why I'll leave me coloring in it because I, I don't color at all well either. I am not a person who colors. Um, so you can just see how simple this is. This is R46. Um, if I can do this, anybody can do this. I am just, like I said, just basically tapping the paper. I am not even really coloring. Um, I guess I was one tap short over here. Maybe two taps. Um, yeah, I'm not even really even like moving the tip. I'm just dabbing and that's it. For the glass, I went with C3 and C1 because, honestly, C2 seems to be hard to find at, like, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I was using the 40% off coupons to create my stash, and then in between, Hobby Lobby has stopped using the, or offering the 40% off. So... Once in a while, Michaels will do the buy one, get one half, and I kind of use that. But I'm getting now where, unless I order them online, like I've kind of done, I've bought what's in the stores. So, yeah, I'm going to have to start using like Dick Flick or something. So I just did that to give the glass a little bit more, and it will lighten up. Now for the eggnog, eggnog's kind of that like really like weird like creamy color. I guess from the cinnamon in it. So I did use EO triple zero and EO double zero. And I used mainly the lighter one, the triple zero for it. But I felt like it just needed some depth in the glass. So I just kind of used this in the bottom of the glass and over to like one of the sides. And there is a little bit of um, uh, some that peeks over the side. So I felt like that was enough just to give it a little color. And then the gingerbread man I used E35 and E37. Now this is like really like almost to the point where you question like why are you bothering because it is so small of an area I'm just kind of outlining the one side and there are some areas that's like on this that's supposed to give it a 3d effect and then this I just fill in but I try to not fill in his buttons here I do have a white gel. Oh, I just filled it in anyway. Um, 
this I'm using very short strokes on because like I said the area is so small but I was really happy how this came out so I'm almost done almost 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 all right so now oh wait i gotta do the jelly roll i should have did their jelly roll first because it does take a minute or two for it to um to dry so if i start cutting at the bottom by the time i get to the top it'll be dry so and then i just put a little bit of a partial it's almost like a partial c to uh get it to look like a glare off of them what a lovely couple huh? sitting in their bath of eggnog little do they know they are ready to be eaten right oh, they just look so cute i'm having such a time over here so i will have to cut in a little bit more on her because I'm going to have to go in tighter to him. But they're dry already. Like I said, that jelly roll pin doesn't take too long. Uh, this is easy enough to just fussy cut out. I, they may have dyes, but truthfully, I don't even know like why you need them because it's simple enough. So I just need to for this. I did keep this lovely old one that I don't even need that I will um, because I need to compensate for this layer on half and then I need to compensate for this on a quarter so if you want to cut out two cut out two but it's simple enough uh, this one got a little bit over the edge so we are almost done with this card and then I will show you I have like almost no scraps left I'm really like even wondering how much more see this is really like kind of a thinner paper like I really need to layer this up it's just um this cardstock is so much thinner, um, it's not laying straight. Like you can kind of tell. Um, so now we'll bump this one up. Yeah, it's just not laying very straight. So we will bump this up and just make sure I'm going to start at that end where I want it to cover. And that is that. Put a little bit of glue on them. And this card is a wrap. And again, using up a lot of scraps. So that is these three. I may glitter up. I'm thinking I'm just going to let it go. But I really liked how this one came out. So now, here's all my crap I got to put away. So now what I'm left with is this chunk of this, I don't even know if I'd call this anything, these shrips. And then I just have these smaller pieces. And if you remember, I still had these sheets that I have been waiting to use for this. I want to do his mittens and his um, scarf in pattern paper. So what I'm going to do now is this card because I want to pick out of these scraps and I've got um, I think 12 cards is what I counted I'm going to get from these sheets. I'm not going to have any scraps because I'm cutting this for by five and a quarter so i'll have like a quarter inch strip but i'm not even really worried about that so what i'm thinking is i can do some as a girl with 
this paper and I'm going to look to what I think is going to coordinate. Like what could be scarves, what could be mittens. Um, so we are going to just start die cutting out what we can from these. Um, I don't think the stripe's going to be very good in those, so I'm going to take them out. I wish I had more of this black, darker one because his tab hat would probably look really cute in that. Um, so I'm going to start just die cutting out some scarves. Oh, this would be a good one, probably for mittens. And uh, I'll be back. Hi, it's Kristen, and I'm back. I, um,. Been working on this last card with this paper, and it's been quite um, quite problematic, and I don't know why. So I cut out. I'm thinking I want to go with this border. I have to cut the paper back because um, I felt like the color matched, and I went with the snowman. But the snowman, when I started to really try and look at it, was not working out, and I think it was because I had so many bland colors like there was no pop of, of a color so in this same elizabeth designs series there is a whole grouping of a boy elf a girl elf i'm looking for my um, picture here's the girl elf which is what we're going to be making um then there's like a different accessories pack there's a snow um santa claus i'm using some gifts from his uh sleigh from santa claus the sleigh and if you've watched any of my other As Many As series, I'd like to do, like, if I'm going to just bang out, like, one, like, a, a quantity of something, I like to come up with one of the, like, center, like, uh, like center pieces and then build a, so I can production line it. So that I'm in the middle of production lining up what I'm doing. And what I'm having is, this is my concept. She's a mess, her face and everything else. So I came up with this and I thought she gave the color and I'm going to be honest. I cut out all these little pieces. Um, when I tell you, like I, I used way more scraps cause I thought it would be great for the scraps. But if you look at how close I had to get with some of the cuttings on this, um, I was using like every little square inch of anything I could um, to get these. So, you know, like you can see in here, it was a lot more. I wound up having to basically cut out for my last one. This was the cut apart sheet and this was like some sugar plum. I had to just kind of use the border around it to get me my last couple things for her. Um, I was going to do the pa one package in the front. That's why she's kind of missing some stuff here. And I, I liked it. I think it filled it out better going around. I'm also excited because I think I'm going to pull in. I had these, because, you know, we have to keep every little scrap. I had these scraps of some white. I must have cut out snow bags. And I kept thinking, oh, I'll make something with it. Well, you know what? I am. I'm going to pull this in here to give her that base to be standing on. But I'm still not liking this frame. Don't know. I'm still looking into what I want to do for that. So I will be back um, to put her together. But right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to... Oh, my lovely chair. You know it's me. I'm trying to production line it. And I started... Um, I have everything cut out. And I have like a whole grouping of my lovely takeout containers. And every single one of these is another like female elf here girl elf let me tell you very confusing to get it all together but i wanted to do um on her face i'm using some of this antique linen distress ink to just give her a little bit of the coloring and what i found was this was like the best to give her some definition i'm just using um like ivory paper from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something. So I used that, that's my last one. So I, d I didn't want to do this without showing you. And then I was using the Distress Ink from Ranger or Tim Holtz, however you want to say it, with sponge sugar. And I was just doing a little bit of a dab in the cheek area to give her a little bit more um, rosiness kind of thing. So I'm going to keep doing this 
the I'll finish these off in a second. Then the next thing was I cut out from a bunch of different scraps. This is her hair and her braids. Maybe I'll leave her over here to the side. And from Nicole Spore, I learned about the coloring on cardstock to give it depth. And I thought, you know what? That's so brilliant. So for her hair, I just gave her a few wispy strokes with this Y21. And I'm going to tell you, it, it worked on all, I told you, I'm using up scraps. So some of these, I don't even know the origin of where they came from. Um, but I found that this color worked on all of the assortment because like this is the same, but some of mine were really dark. Like this was a much darker yellow. Um, here's some of the finished ones that put a little pom-pom up there to give it, like I said, a little depth. It, it still worked, even though that's a darker yellow, it, it, it seemed to work. Um, this was like a, a scrap I had. It's got a little bit of a texture. I don't know if you can see that in there. The paper's like got a, like a checkered kind of texture on it. So I figured that was kind of good. Um, for her braids, I kind of just did a, 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 an X pattern because I felt like, you know, straight lines weren't going to work because, you know, braids have different and then the ends, I just did some straight lines. And then um, for the hands, and I kind of wasting my time because I have to admit, I really, oh, for her, her face, let me go back to the face. I did use this E55, still trying to learn how to do this, to give her eyebrows but just a little bit of color and her nose. They do give you the cutouts for the eyes and I did on this one try to, to do it by hand and you know what? I don't have the steadiest hands. I duck, I die cut the rest of them out and I just used a jelly roll to give the dots on the eyes and I'll do that when that comes up. But the mouth is just done with a fine tipped black Sharpie pen. So I'm gonna do what I can to get these faces done and ready to go. I'm going to go through and do all my coloring so I can get the desk as pretty well cleared off as I can. And then the hands, I, I did try to do like some creasing in there for her fingers. I added them with this E50. Just did a couple real tiny little um, swipes, like strokes. And I felt like it just gave it a little bit more um, detail. It, I guess would be the way to say it. So this is where I'm at right now. I'll go through putting her together in the next phase of this video and I will have a finished card by then. So you'll see what I've decided to do for the frame. I'll be back. Hi, it's Kristen here and I am back to put together the last card of this series, which comes out to be this. I'm not even doing a sentiment because I feel like to do a sentiment would just take away from the cuteness of her. So this was done with the um, Essentials die from Spellbinders. And I had to cut the paper down slightly to get it to fit behind. I think I'm down to three and three quarters to five inches now. So to put her together, um, I think I'm gonna show in a different video how I did her because She's going to be, a, she's not taking a lot of time, but I think there's going to be people who would want to see her put together um, outside of having to watch the whole video. So I will put her together. She's not really that difficult. Realistically with her, the, the biggest thing is to get the head started. So you have um, that stability because what happens is this neck they have a back piece and a, and the forward piece that they get wedged between. And then I just focused on putting her together like her shirt, her pants. I, I put her together. Think about it how you would get dressed in the morning is, you know, you want to do your pants then you want to put your socks, which, you know, to me is the shoes. Um, so for her, for this one, I did use some of my um, Scotty foam. And I have the big, huge mumbo jumbo um, piece here. 
And what I did was I cut this off and I was able to cut this in thirds, not in half, in thirds, because I felt like if it went in half, you were hiding these dots. And I didn't want the dot showing uh, or being covered up but at the same time, I don't want to see the foam. Now see, like that one is going too long. So you have to, that was the trick for this one, was just trying to not hide. You still want to be able to see like through the dots. So having said that, I uh, had to take some time because some of them were getting like really thin, like that one. Yeah. So that was the trick to the doing the front of this. And then the other thing, like I said, was I was using up some scraps from some prior card I made um, for the snowbank. So to show you, I didn't, because they're, they were so thin, you can see how thin they are. Um, I kind of had to really um, move them up but I had to watch because I didn't want them to go too high and then you were seeing them at, like if I put them too high, it would have looked like this, like you would have seen that. So I had to put them in such a way that you could still see the snowbank, but that you could also um, not see the rest of it. So I have a little piece over here that did not get, um, that did not get foam. And We shall just finish this up. Sometimes I think this foam, if they had it perforated, would be great. Maybe you could just cut it in certain lengths, like, you know. But whatever. I'm trying to be a crybaby here, I guess. So you peel off the back and get that stuck on. And, oh, that was that piece. Again, like I end, I do, you are going to see this printed paper behind it, but you know what? You don't see a lot of it because the dots are small and this fly is going to drive me nuts. It followed me from upstairs to downstairs. I think my cats are sleeping on the job. My cats need to get this fly. So having said this, you just need to make sure that you have it. My one friend taught me, you, you take the corners and then the rest falls in line. Get the corners matched up and then you're good. And I have all these tiny, tiny pieces of foam that are sticking around on my workspace now. So there you go. Got that on there. And then I have one of her put together. I made a point to, um, really put her so she's kind of more i'm not i'm not i'm not popping her up there's already enough layers in her i just kind of stuck her on the top of the snowbank and left the um the packages hang out and i thought you know what close enough um because i thought that gave it a little bit of depth to the card and then just put that on a card front so i'm kind of wrapping up this series i'm kind of yeah i guess kind of is my word of the day in it this is what i have left of scraps and some of you would say like they're not even really scraps like these straps or these little strips that's not really a scrap in my opinion but you know some people would put it in inside of cards just not mine it's just not my forte. So this is what I have. I, I could get one more card, but I am so done with this pack now. And this has got to be fun. Like, I'm doing this for fun. It's not a job. If I have to keep, you know, going, 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 it's going to become a job. So, and really, the things that were the fun part of the prints are gone now. The little gingerbread men and, like, the cut-aparts. And so this is what I have left. Um, it's just kind of boring to me. Um, like I said, most of you would think that's not even a scrap. You know, cute, you know, I, I could come up with something more, but like I said, I'm kind of done. There, there's really nothing cute left. 
of this pack. I'm gonna put this in for, you know, our little kiddos to play with in after school and call it a day. So I'm going to try and like clean up a little bit here because now we're gonna do a final recap. I'm gonna get 12 of these cards and I'll be honest, I don't have them all done yet. So there's 12, we'll just say that's 12, right? That's 12, don't you say 12? Um, then we had the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that would be 24 cards. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Oh, let's see. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. 53 cards came out of that paper pack. And had I wanted to, I probably could have got another one or two. So 53 cards out of the um, Cozy Christmas from, yeah, here it is, from the Paper Rose Oh, sorry. I hit my camera. The Cozy Christmas Paper Roses Collection. We have 53 cards. Phenomenal, in my opinion. I am so happy. I hope you're inspired um, by this to give this paper pack a try. Love to see some of the collections you make out of this. If I'm inspiring you and you want to be um, you know, watching more of my videos, it's best to subscribe. And I know everybody says that. I would appreciate it because it would help me build my channel and get in front of more people. But it also brings my videos to the top of your feed. And I know a lot of people say, like, subscribe and hit the bell. If you're not aware, hitting the bell means that when I load a new video, it will be notifying you. So you're not going to find out, like, five days later, like, oh, shoot, put a new video up. That's what that's going to do. It's going to bring it to the top of your feed and also make you aware that something is out there. So I'm hoping you enjoyed this. i got to get these packed up, get them ready to give out to uh, my customers in the next few months. Our cups next couple weeks here actually. Have yourself a nice afternoon. Bye.